Hello everyone, today we're going to be working on some diving corn inspired abstract paintings. So we're going to start with some preparatory drawings, then we'll transfer and execute that drawing onto a better sheet of paper, and then we will begin painting out our compositions. So I'm going to show you just how to do that today. So here we have our regular paper and our nicer heavyweight paper for our painting. So I'm going to go ahead and start making some thumbnails over here of different diving corn inspired compositions. Now these aren't going to be perfect. And look at this. I messed up on my drawing right here, but I think I might keep that. I like that little edge. So diving corn like to play with edges a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and keep that and see what I can come up with. Maybe I'll mimic it over here a little bit on the opposite side, kind of balance it out. So that's one of the things we're going to be thinking about today is balance. I might try maybe something like this. So I just like to play around with spaces and just start messing around with these lines and see what kind of shapes and, and things are created. You know what? I may even keep this right like that. So I'm going to move on to my next thumbnail. All right, well, let's see what else we've got. I could I could play off of some of this. So maybe I, I, maybe I keep, I'm, I'm making these little lines over here. I don't know why today. Maybe it's meant to be. What if I do this one a little more? Uh, okay, maybe I'll do this one a little more squared off. So I'm gonna keep going. So I'm just kind of dividing this picture plane up. You know what, I think I wanna move that Maybe I've moved, push that back a little bit. I like that. Not so bad. Let's see, what else? Maybe I could play with some angles here. I don't have to be perfectly like diving corn, right? I'm not a diving corn robot. But, hmm, so that could be an interesting little space. So you see all these negative spaces? They kind of blend. I like kind of leaving these open-ended a little bit. So it's like, oh, well, what's positive and what's negative? And this, you know, I don't know, this section, I almost want to divide it up a little more. Eh, no, I don't think so. I'll go back. So that's the good thing about these thumbnails. I'm not out of anything if I mess up. And another thing I can, I can, say oh, I like this composition but maybe I want to mess with it a little more I can also just redo it and then see what happens if I, I start adding things to it so I might even end up liking what I did even better maybe a little thinner line here okay I realize I made the line thicker when I said thinner but I'm actually talking about this little line in between <laughs> So I'm I'm not uh, I'm not brilliant, but I'm not that bad. So this is what we're going to start with. Are some of these? Just trying to figure out what we want to do with these spaces. Maybe I'll do a few more kind of uh, triangle-inspired ones. And then I'll just pick one of these to do. I really like this one, but I don't know if I can pull it off in a diving corn style exactly because there's a lot of ambiguity there. I like that ambiguity. I like that you can't tell like what's going to be positive and what's negative because these lines end up making these shapes that aren't quite closed off. And so I would paint them so that these would kind of start being shapes, but then I might fade them out so that by the end, you can't, you know, um, I make a little gradient here, kind of like we've been doing in class. To where by the end of it, you can't exactly tell where this ends and the other ambiguous space begins. So it'd be really fun to do. But the main thing I want to think about is balance when I'm doing these. So right now I'm just studying what I like space-wise, and then I'll come back and try to balance them with value and color and things like that. You know, I'll keep this little line over to the side here. That could be interesting. I don't know. I'd rather it be just open right here, though. I 
I might even introduce some uh, some rounded shapes, you know, uh, into these. So that that's really fun. All right, so now I think I've got enough to kind of pick from here. Uh, like I said, you know, this isn't going to end up in a gallery anywhere. I'm just doing this for a demo for you guys. You get the point. I don't want to just sit here and waste all your time and make you watch this. You're going to end up making your own thumbnails. Um, so we'll move on to the next process. So I, I really like uh, I really like this one. I really like this one, but I don't think it's going to win because... I think I might do that in a different style and actually keep this as a, a real composition that I might actually put in a gallery. But it's going to be more, it's going to have 3D elements to it. So, you know, that's why I love, you know, thumbnails are, I know high schoolers think they're boring. Uh, but to me, I kind of like this one, very minimalistic though. Uh, but to me, you know, just doodling around on paper, that, it's just a very comforting. It's very therapeutic. And I just come up with really good ideas. And I love the feeling I get when I'm coming up with very creative ideas and I'm really getting into it. Kind of like this one, but I don't know. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to narrow it down to these. Like I said, this one is going to be for something completely different. So I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and X that one out. I know. Uh, I'm going to say this one and this one go to the next round and then finally I think I'm gonna end up uh, doing something like this uh, I like this composition I think it would make a great composition but I think this one will give me more uh, more room to show you how to balance things so I think we're gonna use this one right here so this one's better for the demo all right so we're gonna go ahead and transfer that over. All right. And one of the things you'll notice that when you go to put this on big paper is some of your design may not transfer over right. So you see right here where I've got uh, these lines. They're one line represented on the thumbnail, very thick. It works great with the space. But on the paper, they're thinner. So I'm going to have to thicken these lines up. I can't just depend on one stroke of my pencil or what's left of it. Yeah. Um, I'm going to have to actually add that thickness to it. See, so one line here made with one stroke. Here I'm making it with two strokes. So I'll have to fill that in later. I'm going to try to go ahead and close this off, I think. All right, so we're going to go with that. We're going to go with that. I'm going to go ahead and thicken these things up. And one of the things I want to do, I would use, I would recommend for you guys to use a, a thick, uh, a darker pencil because we're going to do these in washes, and I'll explain what a wash is later. We're going to do these in washes so that our lines show up through it because the lines are very important to the diving to diving corn's uh, work. So we're gonna use a nice dark pencil. Okay, I got my ruler now. I was being a pretty bad example sitting here freehanding these very geometric compositions. Shame on me. I should have shown you the right way. So I'm gonna do that right now. There we go. So we're going to, we want to make these really precise, really straight. It's pretty good with that one. I could make some pretty straight, confident lines with uh, without using a ruler, but not with a broken pencil.
Okay, so now we're getting there. So we just want to take our time. You guys want to take your time and do this a little nicer. Number one, you're getting graded. Number two, you're not doing this as a demo. So if you take time, it's not wasting your time. Uh, but when I take my time, I'm kind of wasting your time. And I don't want to waste your time. I want you guys to do and to learn. You learn more by doing, I think. Uh, if you're anything like me, you'll learn more by doing than you will by listening uh, for hours on end. So watching's great. Uh, listening's great. But once you watch and listen and get those components and get those first steps down, then it, it's time to explore on your own. So I can come back now with an, with an eraser and clean some of this up. I think I've got my lines thick enough. I think they match more to the size now, to the scale. Like I said, if I take one pencil stroke on a composition that's you know the size of my top half of my thumb, then once you scale that up, that same pencil stroke is now much, much thinner on here. It just does not relate. It does not translate. We're going to have to thicken those lines up when you transfer it over. Now I'm ready to create a composition and see what happens once we paint it. And we'll do that next time.